I've enjoyed bringing you this series of videos on land management. That's basically oriented towards wildlife, deer, turkey, quail, and other species. But I want to make sure and share that you just can't manage the habitat, like a farmer just can't manage his pasture and not care about how many cattle are out there or how many bulls you got for cows or anything like that. It's important to manage the deer herd and deer is kind of the American icon of big game animals. I'll start by sharing way back in the day when I was finishing my PhD, you go through something called prelims. These are supposed to be questions that really test your knowledge in a broad area of the subject. No one likes them. When I got my PhD prelim questions, one of the questions was, what was the demographics or the sex ratio and age structure of the white-tailed deer herd in the United States pre-European settlement? I thought they wanted me to fail. No one would know that, but I dug into the libraries and found that archaeologists had found the hip girdle from about 10,000 deer in various places from North Dakota and Florida. And from that hip girdle, you can determine the gender of the deer very accurately and the age pretty accurately. Short story is I was able to rebuild that deer herd based on Native American harvest. And it ended up being about 50-50 male, female. And this age structure was better than any state reports today. Now, again, those are estimates based on those bones that were uncovered basically from middens or trash heaps outside Native American camps. 50-50 harvest of bucks versus does with very crude weapons but very skilled hunters. Goodness gracious, we could learn a lot from those Native Americans. Of course, we all have antler envy, right? We want to harvest antlers and we like to harvest a big set of antlers. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I'm just a meat hunter, can't eat those antlers but let a big buck walk by and they can't click that safety off fast enough. So I'll dive into the biology because there's been a lot of research between when the Europeans settled this nation and now. And we know that deer herds function really well when there's a balanced adult sex ratio, one male per one female. Well, how do we get there? Again, most people prefer harvesting bucks. So you have to be intentional about harvesting does. And the obvious question is, how many does should we harvest? It's really difficult to get an accurate survey or census of a standing deer herd in a wild free-ranging area. Here at the Proving Grounds, boy, it's hilly, hollers, rocks, timber, open areas. There's ways to do camera surveys to get a pretty accurate index of that adult sex ratio and how many deer out there, but it's not exact. Here's a much better way and simpler. We simply put utilization cages in our food plot and look at how much forage is growing inside the cage where deer or rabbits can't get versus outside the cage. And if there's a big difference, you know, it's three foot tall inside the cage and just a few inches tall outside, there are more deer than there are groceries on that property. You could do the same with native vegetation, but it's easier to put it in a food plot. You could fence off a 10 by 10 or 20 by 20 foot square area in the native vegetation zone if you've got some sun hitting the ground and see what species are inside versus outside, but that takes more skill. So putting a utilization cage in a food plot is a great way to monitor the most important piece of data. Are there more deer than groceries or are there more groceries than deer? Oftentimes, throughout much of the whitetail's range, there are more deer than groceries. And you can do a couple of things. You can improve the amount of groceries by establishing more food plots or maybe doing prescribed fire or TSI, timber stand improvement, as we've shared in a previous video in this series, and start harvesting more does. And we focus on does because one buck can breed a lot of does. So harvesting a few more bucks is not gonna reduce the fawn crop the following year. And deer populations are all about that fawn crop. But if we want to reduce the amount of mouths on the habitat, we need to reduce the amount of does out there that are going to have more fawns. So balancing the amount of deer through doe harvest with the amount of groceries is job one for deer manager. And then if you are a person or people hunting your farm or your club, whatever, enjoy seeing larger antlers, science has clearly shown that bucks on average, but strong, you know, this research is very clear, 
have bigger antlers each year they are older so a year and a half two and a half three and a half four and a half five and a half most deer don't express their full antler development potential till they're you know five six seven eight years of age based on the quality of habitat so if you want to see larger antlered bucks more frequently pass up those young bucks maybe take a doe while you're out there hunting and let those bucks make it another year old now the old story is, well, if I pass him up, my neighbors will harvest him. And that may be true, but for certain, if you don't pass up that buck, there's no chance he gets a year older. That's often just an excuse to say, I really want to shoot this buck. So if you want to see bigger deer in your area, larger antlered bucks, the number one thing you can do is allow them to get a year older. So we've talked about balancing the deer population with the amount of groceries so all the deer are healthy. All of them are getting ample groceries. And the two stress periods are the late summer and the late winter. There's usually plenty of groceries in the early spring and the fall, especially like when there's acorns on the ground. We've talked about letting bucks get older. You want to track your progress a little bit and one of the easiest ways to do this is collect the weights of adult does, two and a half years old or older. You can look at and see, boy, that doe's a big old doe. Some of them call them nanny does or, you know, Coca-Cola bottle nose does. They're a fully developed doe. Doesn't really matter if it's two and a half or six and a half. Write down all those weights and be consistent. We track the whole weights. We track whole weights because there's probably less variance in people eviscerating a deer. Some people leave the organs in, take the organs out, whatever. A whole weight can vary also. Did you harvest it first thing in the morning and it's been feeding all night or maybe right when it's early afternoon hadn't fed in several hours? There's always gonna be variation. But you get a good harvest, you know, 10, 20 does off of a property, hopefully even more, depending on the property. You take that average of the adult doe body weight and compare it year after year. Not just two years, because it could have been a big acorn crop or maybe the farmer cut the crops early, whatever's going on. But when you follow that year after year, you're going to see a trend. Is that weight staying about the same? You're not really making an improvement in the health of the deer herd. Is that weight trending up? And maybe a few bobbles in there, but going up in general, then something's improving. The quality of the habitat, there's more food per deer. There are less deer per groceries. Whatever it is, is getting better. Is that trend going down? You're probably not harvesting enough does. There can be a lot of factors. Maybe a, a big storm, a tornado, a hurricane, or a windstorm somehow come through and knocked a lot of trees over. And now there's more sun hitting the ground and those body weights go up for a year or two until hardwood brush or whatever happens starts taking all the sun up and it's not getting to those forest floor and growing those very critical native forbs, ragweed, partridge pea, stuff like that, allowing deer to have better diet. Well, you could see that weight go up because of that storm for a few years and then go down as it shades out or a pine harvest come through the area and there's more good groceries at deer level and then those new pine trees shaded out. So pay attention to the habitat and body weights and allows you those simple data to be a much better deer herd manager. These are really simple but time-tested tips of how to manage a deer herd. Let bucks get older if you want to see larger antlered bucks. Also, their condition has a lot to do with antler development and fawn production, milk production. So the amount of groceries per deer. It's not just bucks we're managing for. We need healthy does and healthy fawns to produce very healthy bucks. When we're going through all this, a lot of people think, oh, it's genetics. You notice I have not mentioned genetics till now. And they want to call, they see that spike or that, you know, 7.3 year old or whatever. Oh, let's get those genes out of gene pool. Once again, there's a lot of research. There have been major, major research projects to see if culling works in wild free ranging herds separate researchers, different ranches, whatever, and all of them tell us the same thing. We cannot impact antler shape based on culling wild free-ranging deer. The captive deer industry does if you want to go that route, but they know who bred who. 
those critters have a pedigree, just like maybe your hunting dog or your beef cow have a pedigree that, you know, this bull and this cow paired together produce very large calves, or this buck and this doe or this line of does produces more milk and therefore to have bigger fawns which starts them off better and have better antlers later on. You do not know that in the wild. We can't look at that doe and say, boy, her right ear is kind of cocked over. She produces big fawns year after year. We have no idea. And in science terms, that's talking about those spikes or seven point more mature deer. We're looking at the phenotype. We're not looking at the genotype. Phenotype being what we see. Oh, that buck doesn't have very good antlers. That doesn't tell if it was injured early on or you know, had a really tough winter last year. To make culling, we have to know the genotype. The result of parenting several generations in the offspring and how those offspring performed. And we never know that in a wild free-ranging herd. Bottom line is, there's no chance, that's a strong word, but several scientists have said and published this. In refereed studies now, where people peer review their work, there's no chance culling a wild free-ranging herd is going to result in larger antler size. So shoot the buck that makes you happy and fits the landowner's objectives. We're all privileged to hunt somewhere. If you're hunting public land, probably wide open depending on where you're hunting. If you're hunting private land, be courteous and ask that landowner what their goals and objectives are. If they say, boy, you know, me and my family, we like seeing big antler bucks. You gotta pass up young bucks because they can't express their potential yet. You're not making a, you know, an excuse, well, that buck only had one antler because he broke it off fighting a little earlier on or it's a spike, whatever. We know deer need to get three or four years of age before they really start showing are expressing their antler growth potential. I'm gonna summarize this just a bit. The bottom line thing is deer need good groceries every month out of year, year round, not just when the spring crops are planted or when a lot of acorns are on the ground. They cannot possibly express their genetic potential unless they have ample groceries. That's why a lot of people like to hunt the prairie states, areas where there's a lot of sun getting to the ground, Kansas, Iowa, the upper Midwest, because when there's a lot of sun getting to the ground and not being caught up by a tree, there's gonna be a lot of groceries in reach of a deer. So we gotta have food year round to let deer express their full potential. And then we want the deer herd balanced. We know that fawns are born at about 50-50. They're born at 50-50 and we should design our harvest to result in a mature deer herd that's about 50-50. In a lot of areas, there's been a bias towards buck harvest so we have to err on harvesting more does. And then we need to let bucks reach maturity so they can express their full potential. A yearling buck can only produce antlers so large. It takes full skeletal development and a lot of things before a buck can really put all that energy into producing larger antlers. You've managed the habitat, you've done a great job of managing the herd for a couple years, but don't forget the most important part about hunting, of course, enjoying outside and that really high quality protein we can provide for our family. We want to process that meat appropriately, share it with our family and probably those that don't hunt so we can recruit them into the hunting fold because hunters back in the day walked around really proud and they were considered providers by their family. They were the most esteemed in our Native American tribes in early you know, colony America people that can provide wholesome meat, any meat, any food for the family, were really highly esteemed. Well, that mindset can still be there today. I know my family sure enjoys it when I bring home fresh venison, or I enjoy it when my kids harvest a deer and provide fresh venison for the family, turkey, what have you. Be really proud as a hunter, doing a good job taking care of the habitat that will benefit a lot of species and providing the highest quality meat available to your family wild free-ranging game.